Hello and welcome to our talk today on fractional order differentiation in the Wolfram language and in particular the uh, Wolfram function repository. Um, to, my name is Paco Jane. I'm a research programmer in the Wolfram Alpha department and with me today is Oleg Marachev. He's a, uh, been working with special functions and calculus for many years and is an expert in the field. Yes, uh, for the beginning uh, of our talk, uh, Paco described uh, uh, history and subject, uh, and I will continue with formulas. Thank you, Oleg. All right, um, so you can view our abstract at your leisure. First of all, what is a fractional order integral? Well, um, as we learn in a regular calculus class, we can compute derivatives, we can compute integra integrals, and we learn that integration is the sort of the inverse of differentiation via the fundamental form of uh, theorem of calculus. Uh, so in other words, we can, you know, and, and because these things are repeatable, we could compute an in, uh, integral to some, any integer order. You know, you could do a repeated integration seven or nine or a hundred times. Same thing with differentiation. Um, so you can kind of think of those falling on, on a number line with negative numbers representing integration, positive numbers are differentiation. Well, uh, a mathematician, of course, might come along and say, can we generalize this? Um, for instance, can we uh, think about or, or talk about um, a different uh, a derivative that's not an integer order, but maybe a half integer order or any, in general, any real number uh, order of integration or differentiation? And the answer is yes, we can find a consistent uh, definition of uh, of how to work with these things. Um, just to give you a quick flavor of how something mathematically you might go about defining th this sort of abstract concept is, uh, let's say we have a, f a generalized power function, uh, x to the k power, and we decide we want to um, integrate it, uh, excuse me, take the derivative, um, we get this result here, well-known result. Um, now let's just naively decide that we're gonna let n be a non-integer power. So, uh, excuse me, uh, a non-integer order of differentiation. Well, in that case, we're just gonna replace the symbol n with alpha, where alpha is any real number. And then we know that <clears throat> from Euler that the generalization of a factorial function is this gamma function, a special function. So we can sort of just do the naive thing. And then for any given function we want to differentiate, can operate on Taylor series, resum the, the results in terms of uh, incomplete gamma functions, and boom, we've got a uh, at least one definition of a fractional order integral. Um, that's just to give you a flavor of how these things are developed. There's a lot of history that goes that um, goes into the, the study of these things, and I, uh, there are some points listed here. I'm not going to read them all off for you because you can read those for yourself. But there, here's a little timeline graph of of when some of the important contributions have happened historically to the, this field. Um, moving forward, um, we're gonna skip ahead to a particular definition called the Riemann-Louisville fractional integral integral derivative. And it's defined uh, via the formula here. You can see that it's in all cases an integral transform of some kind involving gamma functions, uh, except of course in the alpha equals zero case, which just returns the function itself. Um, this is an important, uh, definition and one that's used frequently in the field, so it's the one that we've actually implemented uh, in the resource function that we'll be talking about today. There are other definitions. Um, there, they will all agree on the derivative operator for integer alpha, but may disagree on it for non-integer alpha. Uh, for instance, another common commonly used um, definition comes from Gren Grenwald and Litnikoff. Uh, it's particularly attractive because you can sort of always solve numerical um, fractional integral differential equations um, due to the properties of that particular um, definition. But suffice to say, there are many examples. There's over 50 listed in the appendix to this talk and uh, more details in general about the history you can find in our references section. Um, so let's go on and just talk about some of the basic mathematical properties of these um, derivative operators. Uh, they form a continuous group in the sense that if you take uh, the alpha derivative and then the beta derivative, it's like taking the overall the 
alpha plus beta derivative of a function. And that's for any, true for any function. And these semigroup properties are nice because they form a, a continuous semigroup. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting mathematics that can be done there. Um, one thing to caution uh, those of you who are new to this field about is that sometimes our intuition doesn't actually, uh, our, I should say our intuition from regular calculus doesn't necessarily carry over into this new realm. For instance, in general, when you take the derivative of a constant, the fractional derivative, you don't get zero, which is maybe a little bit shocking. Um, just in terms of applications, these uh, uh, equations involving these uh, types of derivatives are associated in terms of physical systems or, or other um, application systems uh, where, where there's a, a concept of memory. In other words, that the dynamics at a given time depend perhaps on state variables at a, a different time. Uh, that would be in contrast to say Newton's second law where F equals MA and we're talking about the force and acceleration at the same time. Um, and uh, finally, we just uh, will show you just some visualization to show you how these things smoothly interpolate between uh, different integer order differentiations. So here we just take a sine function, very simple, and compute the fractional order uh, derivative and then plot it and you can see that it's just smooth as alpha is varied between three and negative three. Um, this is just another, uh, it goes into a little bit more detail about some of the different applications. I'm not gonna read through these here, but there's quite some interesting physical systems, including you know, everything very um, esoteric, like quantum mechanics, all the way to something you know, very, um, uh, you, I guess you could say mundane or down to earth groundwater flow analysis. Um, and just to show you how the field has changed and grown throughout the years, I've got this chart here that shows you citations that involve the words fractional integration, fractional di differentiation over time. You can see that this year alone, so far, there are 1,800 articles. Back in 2011, there were 760. And if you click on this page, you can get some more of this, this data and you can see um, how the trends of, you know, this, this field has really exploded in the last few years. Um, moving on, whoops, I went a little too far, scroll up. Uh, okay, so the main uh, result of the work that we're showing you here today is this resource function, and you can see this sort of blobby thing that in the Wolfram language is, uh, it, it behaves very much like a built-in function. Um, however, it, it goes and gets the code um, dynamically from the Wolfram function repository. Um, I've clicked, I've created a link here so you can see the documentation page for this function. It's just like a built-in function in that it has documents. You can click to copy examples, all that neat stuff that comes with the Fraction Repository. And then we can, you know, test it out on some simple things to make sure it works. And this is the result you would expect. Maybe try it again with a sine function. In general, when alpha is not an integer, you get a very complicated thing involving hypergeometrics. But in certain integer cases, it reduces just as you'd expect it to. Um, uh, just some, some, some algorithmic uh, talk about how we, the different approaches we use to compute these things. There's a few different sort of tracks you can go through. For, for uh, some sort of simple functions, there are just generic formulas that are known, and we converted these to pattern matching rules and replacements. Um, uh, on the other hand, for the bulk of functions, uh, we use the power of Meyer G reduce, which is new, and also a Meyer G form function, uh, which Oleg developed, which converts any generic function into an expression involving Meyer G, and then we do simple replacements for the derivative. We know what the, the um, alpha order derivative of a Meyer G function is. So about 60% of the 82,000 uh, examples that we'll talk about later that we tested this on uh, go through this sort of code path, uh, Meyer G reduce. And then finally, there are some generic formulas for composition and things like that, that um, for fractional differentiation, where you can produce results that involve um, hypergeometric functions of multiple variables, for instance, Apple F1, Loricella, and so forth. Uh, Loricella is actually not implemented yet, but it's coming in the near future. Um, I mentioned Meyer G a lot, so just some quick background. Um, you know, all kinds of um, simple uh, um, elementary functions, I should say, can be written in terms of the power function, right? We're used to that. Um, 
uh, and if you generalize them more generically, um, almost any combination of these things uh, can, you know, uh, at least if you're talking about uh, functions of the hypergeometric form, which is a large subset, um, you can eventually express it in terms of a Meyer G function. And Meyer G functions are defined uh, through contour integration in terms of gamma functions, so they're, they're quite complex. But uh, the nice thing is that once we know how to convert to Meyer G form, taking the fractional derivative becomes quite easy. Here is the formula that we've um, shows how you do the, the derivative right there. Um, moving forward, uh, just some quick properties and relations of these things. Um, note that the resource function results agree with the regular derivative and integral operators in the Wolfram language when you reduce to the uh, to the integer case. Um, okay, the, the results match up in that sense. Uh, you can do repeated integrations uh, in one fell swoop just by using a large number over here. Um, and then finally, we can compare to sort of uh, the calculated, the actual integral, uh, if we look back at our definition of the riemann louisville integral and see that the result is the same. So um, just some sanity checks, if you will. All right, um, moving forward, I'm gonna let Ole take over and he can describe more about the back end of the mathematics. As you see above, um, we, um, in reality, uh, have had <laughs> classical integral differentiation of fractional order. Uh, if we use option uh, generate condition false for our integrate. Uh, but uh, we uh, developed uh, this idea um, and uh, we also uh, implemented uh, new uh, lines uh, connected with uh, fractional integral differentiation. Uh, for example, here uh, you see uh, that fractional order derivative uh, of z in degree uh, c uh, uh, gives uh, piecewise, uh, and piecewise on set position include classical result, which uh, uh, Paco mentioned, and on a middle uh, line, uh, you see something new. Uh, and it comes when we uh, have a situation like uh, alpha equal minus one, uh, alpha equal one, and C equal minus one, and logarithm uh, appeared after integration. We mentioned about this. Um, what's new in our uh, development? We supported uh, differential uh, constants. Uh, it means uh, functions uh, which, uh, after differentiation, uh, gives a zero. Uh, and you see examples of these functions. Uh, it is uh, square root x squared divided in x. Uh, something like uh, a different logar of logarithms um, uh, and uh, derivative zero. Um, and uh, if we make uh, fractional integral differentiation, uh, we produce uh, these uh, constructions uh, hiding uh, again. Uh, you see here the result. Um, and um, uh, also uh, in our uh, research we implemented piecewise. For example, here uh, uh, you see uh, that uh, after derivative uh, cotangent, we see uh, two cases. If integer alpha uh, positive, uh, we produce polylog, and otherwise, for arbitrary uh, symbolical alpha, we produce uh, this uh, big construction with polygamma again. And the same was done for many other functions. Also, what's new, we solved the problem uh, which connected uh, uh, with the logarithm I mentioned to you. Uh, because if you expand, for example, uh, this in k in zero, uh, you will get uh, logarithm uh, in serious expansion. 
and uh, for evaluation fractional derivatives of each term, we need uh, to know uh, how to relate fractional derivatives of such construction, which you see here. Uh, and we made uh, solutions. This is an example. Uh, we have generic formulas and programs in this area. And also, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, uh, evaluated uh, integrals uh, uh, integrals uh, using major G representation. Uh, uh, for example, here we have a series from basic K zero Z, and uh, we can represent uh, through major G uh, using a new uh, major G reduce, uh, which I don't demonstrate here. And then we can make fractional derivative of this major G representation and get result. You see this result uh, here. Uh, uh, by the way, we can get two uh, forms for this result. Um, and um, uh, as a conclusion, I can say the following. Uh, we um, can we collected practically all existing uh, forms uh, for fractional integral differentiation. In particular, very well known form uh, is uh, value fractional integral. And uh, here you see uh, uh, this uh, comparison uh, between um, you know, our uh, results uh, and that this value fractional derivatives can be converted uh, to riemann liouville derivatives, but here I use uh, notations in mathematical uh, generic condition poles as example for demonstrate uh, that relation gives a correct result everywhere. You can see true, true, and so on. Um, and uh, for the uh, daily quarter fractional integral, uh, here another example. Uh, we can introduce uh, each uh, these uh, notations for the recover. Uh, it is uh, uh, zeta in degree sigma minus ten degree sigma instead zeta minus t uh, in kernel. Uh, and uh, uh, we evaluate uh, this result um, uh, for function zeta in degree c, um, and uh, we see how to evaluate. Uh, 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 mathematics is a little uh, buggy in this area, uh, but in any case, uh, we work uh, nicely. Uh, and right now, I will say uh, that we have a rather huge uh, test uh, collection, uh, 82,000, uh, which runs uh, uh, with speed uh, 10. Uh, integrals uh, uh, again? Uh, no, uh, with such speed, uh, you see, 10, uh, 3, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, we selected several uh, examples randomly, and you see table how uh, we lead uh, fractional integral derivative from this. Um, and uh, and uh, also, uh, in conclusion, uh, you see reference. Uh, I am closer uh, with uh, some Cohen Kilbus um, uh, of very huge monograph, about 1,000 pages. Uh, we published in 1993. Uh, it includes a bibliography, about 2,000 references about uh, history uh, and many, many new results in this area. Uh, till that time. But right now uh, we uh, see many, many new publications uh, uh, for the last uh, 30 years. Uh, and in particular, um, uh, you can see a table uh, of different uh, representations, uh, different definitions for fractional integrals uh, here. Uh, Cobert type, uh, Hadamar type, Chen integral, uh, uh, Marshall integral and many others. Uh, more detailed, we present such type information 
uh, in block which we are working right now uh, to uh, to make uh, available for public. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Um, we hope that you try out this function, the resource function that we have, and uh, give us some feedback. Tell us what you think. If you've noticed any bugs, let us know through the feedback form on the webpage. And thank you very much.